Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here back through daily crypto news and analysis. And today we're going to be talking about five altcoin gems that I am looking to buy in 2022. I'm going to include my buy ranges and also my sell ranges on the charts for you guys to pretty much give you guys my entry points and my exit points that I'm really kind of looking at. Obviously, I just want to give you guys a little bit of a warning ahead of time. None of this is financial advice. Please utilize your own exit and entry plan as well. Uh, do not just enter when I enter and do not just wait until I sell as well. Uh, because of course, you know, we all have to have our own exit plans as well. If you guys do want to follow my exit plan, you're welcome to. But with that being said, let's just dive in and let's talk about five extremely undervalued gems that I am buying in 2022. So I'm actually going to be making a video on VeChain um, sometime tomorrow or so. I am going to be addressing why I think that VeChain is such an incredible opportunity right now. Um, I think that this has a great upside potential move in it. Um, obviously, tokenomics compared to most are a little bit overwhelming, um, but we will be talking more so about VeChain and why I do you believe that this has a ton of upside potential in it uh, going forward. Now, obviously, with this one, I do have a little bit more of, you know, some, uh, in my opinion, like when we look at the ex exit point and even the entry point, like this is a little bit less um, conservative, in my opinion, uh, going to like a dollar fifty. Again, at a dollar fifty, you know, the market cap would be a little bit significant. Um, but when you look at like altcoins like Dogecoin at their all-time highs at like over a hundred billion dollar market capitalization, um, I think that we could get to you know roughly a dollar fifty. But it might take a little bit of time. Um, in my opinion, in in terms of like the buy range that we can go down to, it's roughly like the two to almost like two and a half cent zone. I think that that is a perfect entry point area, and it would also be testing some significant demand ranges going back as far as like January of 2021. It's like the yearly support level, and also even like the demand area of like July and August of, of 2020, where we did really kind of hit a little bit of a resistance point. If we can get down to roughly like the one cent zone, that's a major eight point, but it's hard to say that you know if we will get down that low um, I will say this in terms of the upside potential here so first off if we outreach to the 1618 which is a little bit less conservative again you know at a dollar fifty you know roughly going off of the um, circulating supply which is 72 um, currently at the moment um, billion at a dollar fifty roughly that's like a hundred and eight billion dollars in market capitalization is that something that we could hit yes but it is a little bit like i said less conservative i would be more so eyeing like the 59 cent zone which is still almost a 30x opportunity from those buy ranges down there again i think that 58 cents even 60 cents itself is pretty you know conservative in my opinion like a 43.2 billion dollar market capitalization um is something that we haven't really you know not seen in this market before and i know that it might be a little bit of a stretch for something like you know v chain again i will be addressing a little bit more about v chain and what they are focused on i just think that this is something that is highly possible um so you know again you know that is my buy range and that is my sell range this is where i will be taking um a lot of profit also just to really quickly rehash i always take my initial investment out at a 10x opportunity so whenever i 10x my investment i take my in initial investment out just so that you guys know at the all-time high um we would actually be at a 13x almost a 14x my 10x uh profit point would be at almost like 21 cents after that i let the rest kind of ride out i will take major profit at the 1272 and then after that it's basically selling at the 1414 and then the 1618 is where my last major profit point is now of course we might not outreach to that but that is where i'm going to be selling now my next altcoin that i'm going to be talking to you guys a little bit about is telcoin I made a video on Telcoin uh, just recently, actually. Um, I was talking to you guys a little bit about the upside potential on this. Yes, this this also does have you know a high circulating supply and total supply. Do not let circulating supply and total supply scare you away from assets like this. A lot of the supply that you do see is actually needed for a lot of the providers within this project, and I talked about that in my video on it as well. Current market cap is roughly $117.6 million. I do have my buy range 
on the chart down here so this is actually so i bought the initial dip a little bit i'm underwater a little bit slightly on that buy because uh, i did not buy the exact bottom um, but I will say this, I do have um, currently a stop loss set in stone at around almost like it's like a fraction of a cent at like one, five, six. Um, now, my next major buy point on this would be the yearly support, January 2021 yearly support at around 0 0.00052919. Now, again, it's not guaranteed to go that low. Uh, we could have seen the low put in place already, but my opinion, I do think that we could see some nice um, lower price action. It is hard to say exactly where we are going to go and bottom out on. Again, you probably want to be a little bit patient. Um, I do think that there is one last major max capitulation on Bitcoin coming in, uh, but I have been averaging into some positions. Telcoin is one that I do feel a little bit comfortable taking a you know position in because it is 97% down. If we do come down to this, you know, range down here, um, which is the yearly support, you know, you're looking at roughly, you know, almost a 99 point, uh, roughly 2% uh, drop on this asset. Now, if we do come down to this range, um, which I think is, you know, again, way oversold. I don't believe that we actually come down to this range. You can see some of the FIB outreaches up here, which are absolutely life changing. So in my opinion, we would most likely kind of bottom out at this range here. Um, I think that this is probably highly likely. Uh, this would be a 97.63% um, of a drop from its all-time highs. So you're looking at on the next major impulse. So, sorry, let me get on the line perfectly. So there we have it. So at the all-time high, you're looking at like a 41x opportunity. Now, if we do continue to climb on this, uh, say for so at like the 1272, I mean, you look at the massive upside move on this. This is huge. Even to like, for example, the last FIB outreach at 67 cents. Look at the upside potential on that. That is insane. So again, on this one, I'm more, you know, like if you're looking at like a conservative range, um, again, initial investment out at a 10X opportunity, 10X would be around the almost two cent zone, which is, you know, quite a little bit away from the all-time high. At the all-time high, you're looking at roughly, you know, a 40x opportunity. At the next fib outreach, which is the 1272, you know, that is a, over a 100x opportunity. Honestly, at that point, I'm all out of my, you know, Telcoin position. Um, anything after that is just, you know, greedy in my opinion. Uh, so that is like where my exit points are. Initial investment out, sell at the all-time high, and then take major profit here and basically out of this bag. Um, because after that, again, I don't really care about the upside potential here. I mean, yeah, sure. Like you're looking at, you know, this is like over a 434x opportunity uh, to like the upside, which is insane. And that would be absolutely life changing. But I'm not going to, I might have like a small bag that I hold on to just in case we go there. Um, but I'm not going to hold out on that for, you know, again, long term, term or anything like that. Um, next is going to be Casper. So I make a ton of Casper uh, videos. If you guys do want to learn more about the project, you guys are more than welcome to check out my other videos on Casper. Now I did outline my buy range on this one. Um, don't know if we actually go as low as these buy ranges, but it's around like the two to three cent zone. Um, I think that this is a perfect opportunity. Um, at the bottom range here, which would be the top of my buy point, this is like where I heavily ape in. Um, at the outreach of the 1618, you're looking at a 70x opportunity. A little bit more of a conservative range would be like the 1272. That would be almost a 56 exact opportunity. Now, again, initial investment out 10x. After that, let it ride. Um, sell like the last major wick here, which would be like the 24 cent zone. And then after that, like let the rest of the bag ride. Um, I would be eyeing the 1272 to like the 1618. That is where I perfectly, you know, really kind of position myself to take some major profit. Now, of course, I will be reinvesting in on Casper during, you know, the next bear market after these profits are taken. Um, I will outline that, you know, on my, um, you know, channel when that does happen. Uh, next is, of course, 
you know, HBAR. So we've been talking about HBAR for a little bit of time on this channel as well. If you guys do want to learn more about this project, like I said, same with Casper. You guys can check out all my videos on this. Um, I think that with what Casper is building, you know, in general um, is pretty significant. Now, HBAR, I do have a buy range between the 5 and 6 cent zone down here. And uh, we could go a little bit deeper. It all depends on Bitcoin. Um, but on the, you know, FIB outreaches all the way down to like, for example, the six cent zone, which would be testing almost the yearly support. I would say like the, the yearly support is like roughly the five cent zone, uh, which we could wick down to. But just on the top range of my buy range, you guys do see some of the FIB outreaches up there. They are significant at uh, roughly a 10x opportunity from this buy range down here. It would basically be 60 cents or almost like the all time high. Um, I would be, you know, out of that. My initial investment would basically be out at that point. Uh, might even take my initial investment out a little earlier. Um, but then after that, I'm eyeing the 1272, which would be a 16x opportunity, almost 16 and a half, followed by roughly 23x, and then followed by uh, on the last outreach here, you know, a 37x um, opportunity. Now, I will say this, I do believe that um, HBAR could go a little bit higher. I've been talking to you guys a little bit about the four, um, or it's like the three to six dollar range. If we can get to like the three to six dollar range, that would be great. And I do think that this does have the potential to do so, um, but I'm not going to bet on it just yet. Uh, simply because we don't know exactly how the market structure will look and we are, you know, eyeing some significant lows. But I will say this, um, between between the 1618 and the just like two FIB outreach, you know, I think that if we could get a little bit above the 1618 and get some FOMO coming in, then we could definitely eye to three dollar range. And I think that at a three dollar range, um, you know, H bar is nothing too too, you know, significant. I think that that's still pretty significant. Again, uh, or um, conservative, I mean. Um, again, we will already have taken our initial investment out and things like that, so we don't really have to run the risk of losing our money waiting for these targets to, you know, be hit. Um, but this is also, you know, a pretty, you know, good opportunity as well. And last but not least, we've talked about Zinfin multiple times on this channel as well. Uh, this is one that I feel comfortable aping into. Um, I've been talking to you guys about this one for a while in terms of like trade finance and digitization of like trade documents. XDC, in my opinion, uh, could come down to, you know, the perfect yearly support levels uh, going back as far as like March. Um, and roughly like the February time frame. I think just testing that March of 2021 candle um, would be something pretty nice. Um, if we do lose that, um, I would have a tight stop loss on this actually. Um, that stop loss would be if we break down below like two cents, simply because um, this would be our last like major support level. You could actually even wait to see if like this does get targeted. It's totally up to you. I just feel comfortable buying this at around like the two almost and a half cent zone uh, to roughly like the, you know, three cent zone. Um, upside potential on this one as well is pretty nice. I would say that, you know, in terms of what Zinfin can actually go to, you know, I think that like the 60 cent zone is something pretty conservative. That would be only like a 22 X opportunity. Um, anything after that, I mean, like you're looking at some pretty nice highs. Um, I would say like, you know, some of these are a little bit less conservative. Like this would be a 50 X opportunity at like a dollar 40. I mean, it's hard to say because like Zinfin does have a nice circulating supply and total supply range. So I, I could foresee this actually going that high, um, you know, depending on, you know, market structure and market sentiment around XDC, we would just need some, you know, buyer demand in general. Um, but I would say, you know, XDC, I feel comfortable taking the initial investment out at a 10 X and letting this ride and actually just hodling this long term because I think that this actually does, you know, preserve a large amount of value for, you know, the banking and institutional scene. Uh, so I definitely do look forward to, you know, holding this one a little bit more long term. Same with even H bar. H bar is doing some, you know, pretty nice things. Um, but a lot of these I do, you know, I, I will be selling a large amount of these at those levels because, you know, this is just life changing wealth, honestly, at those levels. So uh, to me, those are five altcoins that I am personally, you know, buying and holding for, you know, 2022 and going forward. Um, obviously, you know, I don't believe that we will see a massive bull run in 2022. We could see a quarter four possibly, um, but I'm more so like eyeing the 2023 timeframe uh, for like a wave five. And of course, you know, 
it is a significant risk. You guys do not need to follow me doing so. Um, but, you know, just to give you guys those insights, that's what I am buying. That's what I'm holding. So with that being said, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys want more free content. You guys are more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord down in the description below. As always, up to you all. Have a beautiful day or a beautiful night. Wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, it's been Nick. Peace out, guys.